What is the greatest challenge facing the space sector, which endangers astronauts' lives, risks destroying spacecraft, and even threatens our way of life on Earth? It's not alien invasion or a rogue asteroid. It is, in fact, our own junk. This includes everything from derelict launch vehicles to defunct satellites, and even the occasional dropped spanner. The problem is that most human-made objects in orbit tend to stay there for a long time, and they whiz around the Earth at such high speed that even something as tiny as a fleck of paint could cause serious harm. As well as posing a danger to astronauts, these objects could also damage the satellites that we rely on day to day here on Earth. According to the European Space Agency, there have been over 10,000 satellites launched into Earth orbit since 1957, and of those, 6,250 are still up there. But nearly half of them are no longer functioning. They're just space junk. And it's not just the satellites. In total, more than 28,000 pieces of debris are currently being tracked, traveling at speeds of up to 17,000 miles an hour, with the total mass in orbit estimated at more than 9,200 tons. If any of these objects collide, they break up into smaller pieces, which could result in a snowball effect known as the Kessler syndrome, a runaway chain of collisions that generates more and more debris. More objects means a higher risk of collision, and that risk could become so great it might even render Earth orbit unusable. This would hugely impact daily life, as we've come to rely on satellites for loads of stuff like communications, banking, TV, navigation, weather forecasting, and much, much more. So, how did the situation get this bad? Under international law, space objects should always be registered with the UN, and national governments are responsible and liable for them. However, there is currently no legal requirement to actually remove them from orbit. In fact, the way the liability rules are designed, the costs and potential risks of removal encourage not removing debris. To begin to address this issue, the international community has developed the Space Debris Mitigation Guidelines. These try to limit the creation of space junk and encourage the de-orbiting of satellites at the end of their lifetime or at least moving them to a less used graveyard orbit, clearing the way for new satellites. As well as all this, nations are also debating the best way to remove space debris, who should undertake the task, who must pay for it, and if the removal processes could even be made profitable. We need to discuss how to prevent similar debris problems occurring elsewhere in the solar system too. Space is complex, and that applies as much to the policy, legal and economic challenges as it does to the building of spacecraft. Space debris is perhaps the most significant problem facing the space sector today. However, it is not an unsolvable problem, but any solution will require international cooperation and effective space governance. Astrobiology OU is working on this, but we can't do it alone. <laughs>